Good. So let's talk about parallel axis theorem. Um, we're going to talk about integrating to create to calculate moment of inertia, but we're not going to do that till the end of this chapter. Uh, to start out with, you can use that chart that has pretty standard moments of inertia and just plug in those things like we did in this last problem. If you have something that's not in the middle or on the end of an object, the easiest way to calculate where the moment of inertia, what the moment of inertia is for that object. So for instance, right, we know we can calculate the moment of inertia if I'm spinning this around the center. That's going to be 1 12th ml squared, where it's the mass of the meter stick and the length of the meter stick. If I rotate it around the end, that's 1 third. But what if I rotate it around like a random position? Okay, if we want to do that, instead of just reintegrating the whole thing, and which I'll show you what a pain that is, we're going to use something called parallel axis theorem. And it's really stupid simple, but people mess it up all the time. So pay attention to what the actual things say. So you always want to start with, from the chart, you'll get the moment of inertia around the center of mass. So for this meter stick, where's the center of mass? Middle. Middle. In the middle. So if you read it off the chart, you're looking for the moment of inertia that's around the middle, so around the center of mass, okay? So that's going to be 1 12th ml squared, okay, from the chart. And then you pick the point that you want. So let's say we want to do, we want to calculate the moment of inertia at 30 centimeters, okay? So um, in this case, that would be D. So what's, what's D? 20. 20, okay? It's the distance from the center of mass, not the distance from the end, the distance from the center of mass. We always start with the moment of inertia from the center of mass. So we end up with a D of 20 and just the mass of the meter stick again, okay? So this would be 1 12th ml squared. That's the center of mass for the meter stick plus M 20.2 meters squared, okay? So you'll use the mass of the meter stick twice and that will give you your new moment of inertia, okay? No integrals involved, just plugging into this formula. So, um, and, and just as a reminder, anytime you see a formula in a, an orangey yellow box, that's one that's like you're probably going to have to use, and it's worth writing down, okay? <laughs> Do this clicker question. <laughs> Honestly, um, thinking it's B. Um, please discuss, and we'll vote again. Mm. Well, everybody in the chat says A. Just FYI. <laughs> so remember, what makes um, okay? That's different. Uh, <laughs> A's winning now because the A's in the chat. Um, if you, what are we looking for in this situation? How far the mass is out from the Yeah, mass to be far away from the axis of rotation. Does mass on the axis of rotation count? No. Not really. no. Okay, I'm going to use this thing. So, um, which one has the most mass the farthest away from the axis of rotation? A. A. All of the mass is off the axis of rotation, and you got this big chunk way out here far away. So, A is clearly going to have the largest moment of inertia. Which thing do you think will have the smallest moment of inertia? C. C. C, because all of this big chunk is on the axis of rotation, so it's basically useless as far as creating moment of inertia. And this barely sticks out, and it's right in the middle. So this is your smallest one. Then the trickier thing is, well, actually not that tricky. This one sticks out farther, but it's less mass, because part of this mass is on the axis. This one is all off axis, so it's probably going to win. So you're going to go A, D, B, C, which is choice A. Okay, um, this is a little fuzzy, but uh, B is also pretty good. So we at least we all got the basic idea. All right, cool. We're going to try a parallel axis problem. I'm going to give you about two minutes to set it up, and I'm going to really hope that I can get this to work. So um, here is uh, the center of mass for a thin rod about the center of mass. Okay. Sorry, the moment of inertia for a thin rod about the center of mass. And take about a minute, set this up. It's really just a plug-in one, so I'm not going to take a lot of time, but try to, try to plug in. Okay, 
uh, let's go over this. Um, just for the sake of things, let me draw out the meter stick. So here's your center of mass. Um, we're rotating around the 20 centimeter mark. So the 20 centimeter mark, let's say, is right here. So this is our new rotational axis. Um, what's our distance D here? 30. Yeah, so this is D, which will be 30 centimeters or 0.3 meters. So um, just as a reminder, that's where that goes. Um, if we want to plug these in, this becomes, oops, not plug. This is 1 12th, remember this is our parallel axis theorem. This is 1 12th ML squared plus MD squared. So because this is a meter stick, that's 1 12th um, the mass, which is 0 0.2 kilograms times 1 meter squared plus 0 0.2 kilograms times um, 0 0.3 meters squared. You plug all that in, and you get something that doesn't mean a whole lot to you because you're probably not used to looking at moments of inertia, but it's 0 0.0347 kilograms meter squared, a very nice unit that makes tons of sense to people. Very intuitive. Sorry, that's sarcasm. Um, but that's our answer. We're just plugging stuff in, and this is what we get, okay? What are those units? Kilograms, meters squared. Those are the units of moment of inertia. Rotational units are the worst. Yeah. Um, wait till we get to torque, which is Newton meters, but not joules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's because of directionality. Okay, any questions on this? It's pretty much just plug and play, just don't mess up the D. This is the main thing. Um, and know which moment of inertia you're starting from.